Well, good morning, and welcome, to, yeah. <laughs> and welcome back to the channel. So for those of you who are new here, we've had this heat pump installed now for just under 10 months. And I promised you that I would come back every three months and take you through the usage data for winter, spring, summer, and then as we get in towards the, the end of the autumn, I'll come back with one more set of data. But what I'm trying to do here is show you what does this actually cost to run? So I'm gonna compare the costs for running this for the last three months throughout the summer against my gas bill from a year ago. Now the summer is the month where we don't actually use this an awful lot. It certainly doesn't heat the house. There is no requirement for heating in the house in the summer, but we do have to heat hot water. And in fact, the heat pump is running right now, heating the hot water up because we've all had our morning shower. Now, some of you said, what about the noise this thing makes? As it gets progressively older, maybe the bearings wear. Well, I would kind of hope the bearings wouldn't be wearing after nine months. But again, I wanted to show you exactly what it sounds like. I'm standing in front of this thing and it is running full speed right now because it's heating hot water. But you can't really hear it because it is so windy outside. The trees are blowing, the leaves are being blasted across the garden, but the heat pump isn't the most noisy thing around here. Anyway, we're gonna head into the office and I'm gonna share with you all of the data of how much energy this thing has used. We're gonna compare that to my gas bill a month ago and we're gonna look forward to what is a full year's running cost gonna look like? So what I'd like to do today is share with you some data. Now I'm gonna show you all of the data from my heat pump. I'm gonna give you actual usage data, how many kilowatt hours of electricity it used. I'm gonna compare that to different tariffs. So we're gonna look at what would it cost if we were on a fixed tariff? What would it cost if we were on Octopus Cozy? What did it actually cost me on Octopus Intelligent Go? And we're also gonna take the data from my old gas bills so actual usage data and compare month by month. And I'm gonna adjust down the figures from that gas bill to fit with the modern gas pricing because gas is ever so slightly cheaper than it was one year ago. So I'm gonna present this all to you in charts. Um, we're gonna talk through the charts. There's not very many of them, so I apologize now, but I will try and take you along the journey. And I wanna show you why you shouldn't be frightened of the price of running a heat pump. Now, I don't know if you've noticed this. If you ever go and read newspapers like the Daily Mail, the Telegraph, and all of the other, should we say, right-wing leaning press that seems to be very anti-heat pump, that they always focus in on the running costs of your heat pump in the middle of the winter, January, February. And yes, your heat pump will use a lot more electricity in January and February than it does in June and July. But to be honest, your gas boiler uses a lot more gas in January and February than it does in June and July. So winter bills can look a little bit scary, but when you compare it to a whole year, it tells a very different story. Okay, so let me show you some actual data. So what you can see here are my personal usage data from January through March of 2025. Now, there's a lot on this chart, so let me sort of walk you through what you're looking at. So the blue bars that you can see there are the actual kilowatt hours that my heat pump used for both heating the house and hot water. Now, again, to put this into perspective, everybody is going to be different. The temperature that we like our house at is roughly about 21 degrees. Um, I'm sure based on comments from previous videos, some people will say 21 degrees, we'd be freezing at that. And some people would say 21 degrees, you're crazy, we'd be boiling to death. Everybody is different, but this is my actual usage data. So you can see there in January, we used about 600 kilowatt hours of electricity to heat our home and heat our hot water. And that dropped to about 410 as we go into February, and we're down at about 210 as we go into March. Pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? The temperature starts to get warmer, we use less and less energy to heat the house. Okay, let's look at some of the other things on this chart. So the yellow line that you can see that starts off 
uh, quite low down. That is our solar generation. Now we're gonna come back to solar generation a little bit later. What you can see there is in January, we didn't generate enough electricity from solar to cover the running cost of our heat pump. As we get into February, we're getting close. We're about three quarters of what our heat pump would use. We were able to generate from solar. But as we get into March, we're significantly exceeding what the heat pump would use. So if you have solar and or batteries, then couple these with a heat pump, all of a sudden the picture starts to look a lot different. And we're gonna come back to what it actually costs us to run because we have solar a little bit later on. Okay, let's take a look at the red line that you see uh, at the top of the chart there. That is the actual cost of gas. Now, what I did here was took the cost from, a, from the previous year. Generally, we don't change very much. Um, you know, we, we've lived in this house a long time. Our usage is, is pretty static. So what the amount of gas we used a year ago would be very similar to what we would use this year. But the cost of gas has come down ever so slightly. So I did adjust the figures for the 2025 cost of gas rather than the 2024 cost of gas. So as you can see there in January, um, just the cost of gas to heat our home would have been somewhere around about 180, 185 pounds. But again, just like the heat pump electricity usage, as we start to go into February and into March, that cost comes down but we'd still be paying somewhere in the region of about 135 pounds a month for gas uh, in March if we weren't using the heat pump. Now, underneath that, you'll see two more lines. One of those is for the fixed tariff. So this is if you're on um, like something like Octopus's 12 month fixed tariff. This is where you would pay uh, 25.43 pence per kilowatt hour, irrespective of what time of the day you use that. And then underneath that, the, uh, the dotted line is if you are on the cozy tariff. Now, cozy is a little bit harder to, uh, to, to model, and that's because you get some cheap periods during the day um, and some more expensive periods. And depending on what you're doing, it might affect your figures. But I've averaged it out at roughly 20 pence per kilowatt hour. Um, your mileage may vary if you're on cozy. But as you can see there, both of those tariffs are significantly cheaper than gas. Um, if we look at January, if you were on the standard tariff, then you'd probably be saving somewhere in the region of 30 to 40 pounds per month. If you were on Cozy, you could be saving about 60 pounds a month over the standard gas tariff. Now, it's a little bit hard to see, but if you drop down uh, above the yellow line, there is another line there. That is my actual cost. So we're on Octopus Intelligent Go. We have batteries in our house that we can charge up on that cheap rate electricity. And I'm paying an average across uh, the year so far of about 7.8 pence per kilowatt hour. So that is my actual cost, um, that line that's dropping away there to the bottom right. So let's put those winter costs into context. Even in the coldest months of the year, January and February, heat pumps are still cheaper than gas. Now, as I've said in plenty of other videos, we do not live like hermits. Basically, from about the beginning of October, we will turn our central heating on, we will heat the house to 21 degrees, and we will keep it at that temperature all day. We very, we don't really vary the temperature very much. Now, when we go to bed at nighttime, we do drop the temperature in the house to about 17 and a half degrees. Um, that's what we find it comfortable to sleep at. But other than that, in the morning, it goes back to 21 degrees and it will run from early October, probably through to about mid-March at that temperature. We don't mess around with it. So all of the numbers I've given you are based on my actual usage, my gas bills from a year ago. And again, as I said, I've adjusted them because the gas price is slightly cheaper than I was paying a year ago. So let's take a look at the rest of the year. So as you can see, as we go through April, May, June and July and, and into August, the amount of electricity that we use uh, drops significantly. And as I said, that's because we're not heating the house, we're just heating the hot water. But the chart changes quite significantly. So if you take a look at that yellow line there, that is our solar generation. As we get into June, as you can see, we're, make, we're able to generate 10 times more power than we're actually using on the heat pump. Now, obviously we export a lot of power during the summer, um, but we still run our house. Everything that needs electricity comes from that solar generation. 
The red line there is our gas cost. As you can see, the gas cost does decline in the summer. Um, as we come down through April, May, June, you can see it's getting less and then it kind of flattens off through June, July and August. But it is still significantly more expensive than if you were running a heat pump using either the standard tariff or the cozy tariff. And those lines kind of almost join together there. And again, just ticking along the top uh, at the bottom there is my actual cost. So let's bring all that together because what I've shown you so far are two very different pictures. We've got the early part of the year, we've got the middle part of the year, and obviously we have the end part of the year to come. Now I don't have actual data because it is still September, so um, I, I'm not gonna give you actual data, but what I will do is use a previous year to predict what we think we're gonna consume for the rest of the year. So based on the prediction that I'm gonna show you, I think the annual running costs for a heat pump with my usage data would be somewhere between 190 and 627 pounds obviously dependent on the tariff you're on and that doesn't uh, factor in any solar or batteries this is just pure electricity costs if you were to heat the house exactly the same way using gas at the current price of gas it would cost 1184 pounds so let's put that all together into one chart. So as you can see on the left there, we have our January, February, March part. We have the April through August. And then the four bars you can see on the end there, I've, I've hatched those to show that those are predictions based on our previous usage. But really what stands out to me in this chart is the yellow line for solar generation. Now, as I say, this is actuals, and you can see there, uh, as we get into July, there was a bit of a dip. That was because we had a rubbish July. We had a lot of rain. Um, it ticked up a little bit then as we, we get into August. But we'll expect that solar generation to decline as we go through the rest of the year. The gas price, as you can see, it drops down in the center of the year and then rises up again as we get into October, November, and December, which makes perfect sense because it's gonna get colder, we're probably gonna have the central heating on. But it's the other three lines that you wanna focus on. So again, the cost of electricity if you're on a standard tariff, the cost of electricity if you're on cozy, and then the little dark line that ticks along the bottom there is my actual costs. So again, don't worry about my actual costs for right now. Let's just look as if you were on a standard tariff. There is at no point on that chart is gas cheaper to heat a house the same way that I heat mine uh, using gas rather than electricity. And if you're on cozy, yes, there's a, there's, a, there's a little bit of a delta there and a little bit of extra saving. So if you don't have an EV, you don't have solar and batteries, you can't get any of those tariffs, cozy is still gonna be your best option. Now, as I said, my situation is a little bit different because we have the solar generation, the solar generates way more electricity than we need during the summer months, and we're able to use the money that we get back from Octopus to offset those costs during the year. So if you have enough solar and battery capacity, you can basically run a heat pump to heat your house for free. Now, there will be an argument that people will make in the comments that if you were to buy that electricity in and use the electricity to heat your home and then sell your surplus back, you could make a little bit more money. And absolutely you could. Um, but you do generally need a bit more battery capacity to be able to do the energy arbitraging um, for that to work out. So one of the nice things about having solar and batteries coupled with a heat pump is you're effectively generating your own power for it. You might not be able to generate enough in January to power the heat pump, but you can certainly offset that in the summer with your solar generation. Based on the chart, we're gonna, we're gonna make some predictions for the rest of the year. The amount of heat energy that our home will use in 2025, I'm predicting to be about 8.9 megawatt hours of heat. To be able to deliver that, we need to use 2.4 megawatt hours of electricity. That means we have a seasonal coefficient of performance of about 3.63. Now again, there's lots of people out there shouting, well, if you don't have a seasonal coefficient of four, then gas is always gonna be cheaper. Well, if you look at the charts and actual real world usage data, you'll see that that is just wrong. If we were to heat our home with gas, so if we hadn't have put the heat pump in, we'd have continued to put in, well, we'd actually have had to put in a new gas boiler because our gas boiler was failing. Um, the gas would have cost us 1,184 pounds to deliver that same amount of heat energy. 
if you were on the standard tariff, it would cost you £626 in electricity. If you were on Cozy, probably more like £492. And if you were just using a battery to buy cheap rate energy at night, store it to run your heat pump, you'd probably be using somewhere around about £194 of electricity. For me, we're going to generate roughly 9.5 megawatts of energy this year. Our heat pump is going to use 2.4 megawatts of that electricity. So therefore, our heat pump is effectively free for us to run. So let's wrap this up. So there's a couple of things that I want to just leave you with, and that is if you're considering getting a heat pump, firstly, I'd be grateful if you'd use my Octopus referral code, which you'll find on the screen below. But if you are considering a heat pump and you're being put off or you're worrying about those winter energy bills, then please don't because they only tell a very, very small part of the story. And it's the part of the story that all the heat pump naysayers out there will focus on. But the reality is when you look at it a cost over the cost of a year, your heat pump is going to be significantly cheaper to run than gas. Please don't listen to people's opinions on heat pumps if they don't have a heat pump, because all they've got to go on are stories that they've heard from other people that they don't actually know are true. They may have come from the Daily Mail or the Telegraph, or I heard from a man down the pub who happens to be a gas fitter that heat pumps are expensive to run. Go and talk to one of your neighbours. If you know somebody who's got a heat pump, go talk to them. Go on YouTube, find people who have heat pumps who are willing to share their, their data with you. Or if you just want a, a, a more anonymized way of doing it, go to the website heatpumpmonitor.org. Now this is a website that consolidates data from lots of people all over the country who are sharing data from their heat pumps. And it's not just people who have really efficient heat pumps, there are lots of people who are sharing data who you know have a less efficient heat pump than I do. Now. Mine could probably be made more efficient. And one of the things I will be doing over the next 12 months is looking at how I can tweak it a little bit to get a bit more efficiency out of it. But to be honest, I'm quite happy with the performance of my heat pump today. It's not costing me anything to run. It's saving me over £1,200 a year that I used to pay for a gas bill. Now, I know one thing that is going to come up in the comments and everyone is going to say, well, what about the cost of installing the heat pump? You're saving this money, but it costs money to install. Well, I was in a position where I had to make a decision. My old gas boiler, which was 27 years old, was failing. I was either going to have to put in a new gas boiler, which was going to be around about £3,700, or I could put in the heat pump, which actually cost me £3,900. So the cost was pretty similar. Um, and as I say, the big difference between the two with the heat pump I can generate the power for it. And with a gas boiler, I can't. Anyway, I hope this has been useful. I do apologize. There has been an awful lot of data in this. If you do have any questions, then please do hit me up in the comments below. Happy to answer any questions you've got. Um, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people saying, well, you made a mistake here. If I've made any mistakes, then I do apologize. Please let me know and I will correct them. But this is our data. You know, we live our life the way we want to live our life. We don't, as I say, live as hermits. We heat our house. We keep it nice and warm. We have hot water available on demand, and it costs us next to nothing to run. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. If you have, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated. And if I'm lucky, I will see you back here real soon for another video. Take care.